This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. It's been another tumultuous week for the Trump administration, as President Trump threatens to shut down the federal government over funding for a border wall. There have been some shakeups in the Trump White House. On Saturday, President Trump announced Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke will soon resign. Zinke's facing at least 17 federal investigations into suspected ethics violations. During his time in office, Zinke presided over the largest rollback of protections to federal land in U.S. history and opened opened up vast swaths of U.S. coastal waters to oil and gas drilling. Former fossil fuel industry lobbyist David Bernhardt will become the interim interior secretary. He's the deputy now. Meanwhile, Trump has tapped Mick Mulvaney to become acting chief of staff to replace General John Kelly. Mulvaney already holds two posts in the administration, White House budget director and acting director of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Meanwhile, in Texas, a federal judge has declared the Affordable Care Act unconstitutional, setting up a likely challenge to President Obama's signature health care law at the Supreme Court. To talk about all of this and much more, we're joined by longtime consumer advocate and former presidential candidate Ralph Nader. He is author of the new book, to the Ramparts, How Bush and Obama Paved the Way for the Trump Presidency and Why It Isn't Too Late to Reverse Course. Ralph Nader, welcome back to Democracy Now! Let's start where we ended with that long list of just what's happened this week, and that is this Texas federal judge, yes, nominated by President George W. Bush, but confirmed by a Democratic Senate, this judge um, calling the uh, ACA, the uh, calling Obamacare unconstitutional, and what this means. I think it's going to be overturned. It's almost unanimously condemned by legal experts from all sides. It's a considered intellectually bad opinion by conservative legal scholars and denounced even more vociferously by progressive legal scholars. And it doesn't have an injunction in the country, so there's going to be no changes. Uh, Unless, uh, on rehearing, uh, the judge really goes off the rails, but then uh, I think he would be uh, overreaching in terms of his own jurisdiction. So, we'll wait for the Circuit Court of Appeals. So, the Circuit Court of Appeals rules, and then it could go to the Supreme Court right in time for the 2020 elections. Um, President Trump tweeted this morning, the deductible which comes with Obamacare is so high, it's practically not even usable, hurts families badly. We have a chance, working with the Democrats to deliver great health care. A confirming Supreme Court decision will lead to great health care results for Americans, he wrote. So, if you can respond to that and talk about an issue that's not talked about very much in the corporate media, and that is the issue of Medicare for all. Well, that opens the door. I mean, if, if Obamacare, which is full of loopholes, excessive complexity, still 29 million people without health insurance, tens of millions underinsured, uh, the corporations run away with record profits, drug companies, hospital chains, insurance companies, huge executive compensation. Uh, so, if uh, if they overturn judicially, which is not likely, Obamacare, uh, even The Wall Street Journal has said uh, that this will open up uh, the path to single-payer, full Medicare for all, everybody in, nobody out, uh, much more efficient, uh, and, above all, gives you your free choice of doctor and hospital. You're not uh, corralled in these narrow uh, networks. Uh, and if you go on a network, you have to really pay tremendous uh, price out of your own pro pocket. So that, that's, that's what we're waiting the Congress to do now. The congressional committees, with their fat budgets and staff under the Republicans, have been sitting on their hands. They haven't been engaging in public hearings, Amy. Uh, they haven't been engaging in supervising the corruption in the uh, executive branch. They weren't going to present to the progressive chairs of the House of Representatives a whole list of hearings that have to be held in order to put these in play, electorally, in terms of public opinion, and in terms of civic action. I can give you a, a quick list, if you'd like. Hmm. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, 
First, uh, obviously, is one on single payer. Full Medicare for All is now supported by majority of the American people, uh, a modest majority of doctors, an uh, uh, even bigger majority of nurses. Uh, what are we waiting for here? It's much more efficient as well. There needs to be hearings on corporate crime by the Judiciary Committee. There's a corporate crime wave in this country. According to Malcolm Sparrow, Harvard University, and other sources, $350 billion in annual billing fraud and abuse in the healthcare industry. That's almost a billion dollars a day. It isn't even mentioned under the Republicans in Congress. Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine put out a report, peer-reviewed, over two years ago. 5,000 people die every week in this country in hospitals due to preventable problems. We know what they are. There are no congressional hearings here. There's got to be congressional hearings on foreign policy. We, we don't have any revaluation of failed foreign policy or the wars of aggression or the violation by the White House of the Constitution, federal statutes, international treaties. There used to be hearings by Senator Fulbright on the Vietnam War, which helped end that war. The House F Foreign Relations Committee has got to work on that. Criminal justice reform, uh, that, that one is long overdue. I mean, the Congress is the main investigative uh, branch of the U.S. government, and it's been asleep uh, while the Republicans have been cashing in with these corporate uh, cash con uh, contributions. How about uh, climate devastation? I think we shouldn't use the words climate change. It's too benign. When I was growing up in New England, climate change meant summer, autumn, winter, and spring. <laughs> We're talking climate crisis, climate de devastation. Been no hearings on that, uh, a major threat uh, to the planet. Uh, and to the natural world. Uh, so you just you could just go list after list. Minimum wage, that should be up right away. That's a frozen seven dollars and twenty-five cents. Thirty million Americans are making less today than workers made in nineteen sixty eight adjusted for inflation. Rob, and that's gotta be the, the House Labor Committee. I want to go further with this issue in our next segment, but I wanted to talk about these latest developments and get your response, for example, to Trump tapping Mick Mulvaney to become the acting chief of staff to replace General John Kelly. Mulvaney already holding two posts in the administration. He's White House budget director and acting director of something I think you care a lot about, the Consumer Financial Protection Board uh, Bureau. Uh, Mulvaney's promotion came as the Daily Beast website obtained a video recorded in 2016 of then Congressperson Mick Mulvaney uh, in a um, in a congressional debate calling Donald Trump a terrible human being. This is what he said. Yes, I'm supporting Donald Trump. I'm doing so as enthusiastically as I can, given the fact that I think he's a terrible human being. Uh, but the choice on the other side is just as bad. So there he's calling Trump a terrible human being. Um, uh, Talk about the role that Mulvaney has played and what's going on in the White House right now. And does it matter who is chief of staff? And is it significant that he is has been approved by the Senate um, uh, in his current roles? And so that could mean he could be subpoenaed by the Senate and testify in a way that an advisor that wasn't approved might not be able to be. Well, it's been called the second most important job in the federal government, chief of staff to the president. Um, Mulvaney is a massive outlaw. He has everywhere he, he goes in the federal government. He shuts down law enforcement. He harasses civil servants. He aids and abets Wall Street crimes with his supervision of the Consumer Financial Protection uh, Bureau. He's, he's basically said one of the main purposes of this agency is to protect Wall Street, when it's just the opposite. It was to bring them uh, to justice uh, when they commit these uh, crimes, these deceptions, these manipulations with other people's money, pension money, uh, uh, mutual fund money. Uh, so he, is, he really is an outlaw. And unfortunately, uh, our legal system doesn't give ready access to the courts by citizens uh, to sue to remove him from office. He can be removed by the president, uh, but uh, let no one uh, be puzzled when he starts applying with another outlaw, John Bolton, the national security advisor to uh, Donald Trump. 
uh, to foreign and military policy. These people are really clinically outlaws. They don't believe in the constitutional uh, power of Congress to declare war. They don't believe in the Constitution of, of Congress to uh, confirm uh, nominees that are in important offices, major offices, as the principal offices, as the Constitution provides. They've never met a law, a war they haven't uh, liked, they, more and more weapon systems. They fought against the auditing of the Pentagon budget, something conservatives say is obvious. Uh, runaway corruption and corporate contracting, Lockheed Martin's F-35. So I think President Trump is digging himself an even bigger hole by putting Mulvaney there. The, the combination of Mulvaney, John Bolton, and Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is a lethal one even for Trump's political survival. He's trying to get sycophants around him, which is usually a late stage in the collapse uh, of a regime. So, on Saturday, President Trump also announced uh, that Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke will soon resign. Uh, I think he was given an ultimatum of something like by the end of the year. Zinke facing at least 17 federal investigations into suspected ethics violations. During his time in office, Zinke presided over the largest rollback of protections to federal land in U.S. history, opened up vast swaths of U.S. coastal waters to oil and gas drilling, uh, very much following in the model, I think, of Scott Pruitt, uh, the former EPA. EPA head, who is then replaced by Andrew Wheeler, the acting EPA head, who is a coal lobbyist. Um, it looks like Zinke's being replaced by the acting um, uh, by uh, his deputy, also a an oil and gas uh, lobbyist. Well, that's uh, what was foreseen by a full page ad over a year ago by dozens of companies uh, that are in the outdoor recreation business. Uh, led by uh, Patagonia and, and their CEO, Ivan Chouinard. He ba they basically predicted this is exactly what Zinke was going to do. He was going to try to overturn existing statutes and regulations by fiat. Uh, and he's in court. Uh, environmental groups have taken him to court uh, many times. So it's a good, uh, a good event that he is now out of office uh, and uh, Mr. Trump has to start all over again in terms of trying to uh, corporatize the resources that are on our federal lands that are owned by the American people and trust for posterity. Mm. In this possible government shutdown that could take place right before the Christmas holidays uh, on Friday, Trump wanting something like, he's saying, $5 billion uh, for the border wall. You see his uh, shutdown showdown with Pelosi and Schumer uh, in the Oval Office. Well, as usual, the Democrats don't use all the arguments they have. What Schumer and Pelosi should have said in that White House confrontation that was televised was, uh, Mr. President, if you shut down the federal government, you're going to cost far more American lives than a porous wall that is eroding uh, farmer uh, property values and ranchers uh, on the Mexican border, because uh, the shutdown will involve about 800,000 workers. Look where these workers are coming from. Homeland Security. He's going to shut down Homeland Security to build the porous wall for so-called border security. Uh, how about this? Uh, the, the law enforcement officials would be uh, fur furloughed in terms of undermining public safety. How about the environmental protection dealing with toxic air, water pollution? How about people in the Food and Drug Administration supposed to be looking out for food safety, recalls of contaminated food? The Democrats don't know how to make strong arguments, whether it's for single-payer uh, cracking down on corporate crime. They really have to wake up. Uh, I'm going to hold them, and I think a lot of citizen groups are going to hold them to high expectations in the House of Representatives. There's huge corruption in the executive branch. You have poll after poll in America, and that it comes in number one. What most people are concerned about is political corruption, because they know how it plays out in their daily lives. They've got to have, through the House Oversight Committee, prime hearings on political corruption in the Trump administration, some of which is inherited from prior administrations. And the th your thoughts on impeachment? Well, impeachment uh, is going to await the report uh, of the Mueller uh, investigation. 
Um, if he comes out with uh, documentation in terms of high crimes and misdemeanor potential, uh, the House of Representatives has a constitutional obligation to initiate impeachment hearings. I mean, it's just basically investigating uh, the high crimes and misdemeanors of President Trump and other high officials. We shouldn't make a big deal out of it. I mean, our founding fathers let presidents between elections uh, be unaccountable except for one uh, measure, and that is the impeachment function. And basically, they said, look, uh, we're going to let uh, Congress fire a high government official if they impeach in the House and convict in the Senate. Uh, there's a, a good book on impeachment that educates people uh, that has come out uh, recently. And uh, there are other um, in information uh, sources. I mean, people have got to uh, st stop thinking that impeachment is like uh, uh, the ultimate neutron bomb or something. It should be viewed as a normal way. We're the smallest but most powerful under the Constitution branch of government. Uh, the only really way they can have to hold the uh, executive branch accountable person by person, official by official. So Congressman Jerry Nadler, who's heading the House Judiciary Committee, um, has got to look at his constitutional duties here. Ralph, I'd like to ask you to stay with us as we talk about your book, Ralph Nader, longtime consumer advocate, corporate critic, former presidential candidate, has just written a new book, which we're going to talk about in a moment, To the Ramparts, How Bush and Obama Paved the Way for the Trump Presidency and Why It Isn't Too Late to Reverse Course. Stay with us.